creatives face a real dilemma. And by creators, I mean artists of any kind. In fact, I mean a lot more, a lot broader than just artists. But they face a huge dilemma. On the one hand, they're creative. They have a gift. They're gifted. And I think they'd like as many people in the world to enjoy their gift, to appreciate it as possible. So if they've written a really beautiful song, if they painted a beautiful painting, they would really like for a lot of people, a huge number of people, to enjoy it, whoever might want to enjoy it. I know this sounds unrealistic because of the other th part of the dilemma, which is they actually need to make a living. And we're so accustomed to this dilemma. We're, we take it so for granted that the moment I was saying, don't you really want the, the work to work around the world, uh, to work its way around the world for free, you're thinking, no, 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 that's impossible, you can't do that. Well, the other side of the dilemma is you need to put food on your family, you actually need to make a living off your work somehow, and if your talent is painting or choreography or sculpture or whatever else it is, the business models we've figured out today to make a living are really to sell those items like sticks of bubble gum in individual works. Um, this dilemma has actually crippled culture in a lot of ways. Now, if you want to see the businesses of culture, go read Creative Industries by Richard Caves. It's a very good description of how we got to the present in theater, movies, book publishing, magazine publishing, etc. And he really describes why the different industries have their different business models. Why is there a studio model in movies? Why is there a record label model in records? All those kinds of things. It's a great book for the history of these things. It is horrible if you're trying to think ahead and think freely about what might happen next. Artists, creative people, are gifted. And if you want to read about this side of the formula, read Lewis Hyde's book, The Gift. Uh, which is really all about how gifts are meant to circulate, how people are gifted, and their gifts are meant for the world. Uh, and then if you want to take this a lot further, uh, Hyde just recently published a new book called Common as Air. And in it, he's really describing the commons. And the commons is the space where works exist that we can all share and use and riff off of and improve and uh, comment on and so forth, as opposed to the protected, copywritten world where if you do something uh, with a particular character and do it... Um, if it's not parody or if it's not fair use, and, and fair use has really been, been circumscribed or, or limited lately, um, you might get in a whole lot of trouble or might be asked to take it down. Just try putting an artwork by Picasso on your website. Uh, his estate will make sure that you don't, don't get to put it up for very long at all. So um, Hyde in, in Common as Air is actually defending the commons. And this dilemma is actually solvable. It's not solvable with the tools we have on hand today, but uh, in future RexCast, I'll actually talk about how we, how we might approach creating a platform with which people could make a living so that they could get out from under this dilemma so that they could actually make a living. So we'll be talking about how commerce meshes with the commons and the gift economy in some healthy, productive, thrivable ways.